Hi everyone, it's Erin from Journeying Soul Therapy and today I'm sharing with you a transcription of a recent session. I would like to thank my client firstly for allowing me to share. I found this information really interesting and I wanted to transcribe it to ensure the message came across as clearly as possible and also you know I know quite a few of you enjoy these transcriptions so this is for you too. So I hope you enjoy. Um, so we start by clearing the energetic body of my client. And I take her through a portal to a place she needs to see today to discover more about who she is and why she's here at this time. And I ask her what it is she sees around her. She says, I notice amazing buildings made of sandstone carved and etched with much beauty. Do you feel male or female or neither? I feel female, very similar to how I feel today, almost identical. And what are you wearing? I'm wearing very light colored clothing. It feels soft, it feels lightweight and it shimmers as if there's a metallic thread running through it. And do you notice if you're carrying anything on your hands or your back? I'm not carrying anything, but I do notice I'm wearing jewelry, very beautiful bracelets. I think they have a more significant meaning because they stand out so much. And as I look at them, they have some kind of electrical pulse or light that runs through them. But they're made of gemstones. What does this electrical pulse look like? Almost like a moving light, a light that moves within them. It gives off an energy, very soothing energy that travels through my body. And as I look at my feet, I notice I wear these bracelets around my ankles so that my whole body is charged with this soothing energy. And where would you like to go in this place? What draws your attention? I would like to go to work. Okay, let's forward time. Be there now in the place that you work. Tell me, what do you notice? There is a huge foyer in this building. It's a very high ceiling with glass at the top to let the light in. There is a bustle of people moving from place to place. I slowly make my way to the left where there is a corridor. And I walk down the corridor and I enter through the door to my office. I see a desk and bookshelves all around the walls. There's lots of light coming in through the window. And the glass is what you might call mottled, not clear, but it's very beautiful. And a soft light comes through and makes the office feel very warm and comfortable. Very good. And what is it you do next? I sit at my desk and I sense there is a technology in my desk not like a computer that almost feels as if my desk is the computer. It has a personality that I can speak to and I ask it to show me what needs to be done today. The desk is a screen, like a holographic screen, and it shows me some graphs. Do you know what these graphs are showing you? The first thing that comes to mind is the Schumann resonance. Can you tell me more about why you would be looking at the Schumann resonance? I'm not sure if it is the Schumann resonance or something else, but it's the only thing I can compare it to. There are lots of red areas on the graph. I need to call my colleagues to help me assess what this means. So I make a call and ask my colleagues to come and see me as soon as they can to help me work out what this means. It doesn't feel good. OK, 
Okay, let me know when they get there. They are here, three of them. It's a mix of male and female energies. And they stand around my desk to look at the screen. They're also concerned. One of them walks to my bookshelves and is looking for a particular book, a large reference book. They pull the book from the shelf and bring it to the desk, a very old looking book. And they mention something about a code. I'm not sure what this means. The page they open up to shows a code of numbers and letters. And they say that this has happened before. And we need to investigate the code to see if it matches the code that's happening in this graph. Okay, tell me what happens next. Everyone leaves and takes pieces of information with them that they specialize in. And I think we will meet later in the day to discuss more. There is a slight concern and a worry for the people who live here. I do get the sense that we knew this would happen and I feel we are prepared with the information and technology we need. And I don't know, I get the sense that the inevitable outcome is good and bad. That doesn't make sense. Can you tell me more about the technology you have? I can't really describe it in detail. I just get the sense that technology is all around us, that there is good technology and bad technology here. I feel the place I am in has always had good technology and that we have been working to eliminate the bad, but it's not possible. And do you get the sense this place you're in is Earth or? Somewhere else, what do you feel? Hmm. The words fourth world come to my head. I don't know what this is, the fourth world. It seems, seems there have been many worlds like this. And this world is coming to an end because of the bad technology. And we need to prepare for that. When you say world, what do you mean? It's like Earth, but different. It looks very similar, feels very similar, but different. Like my senses are picking up on different things. And what comes through is that there have been many copies of Earth, many versions. I get the sense there are many Earths, not just one as we think. Can you tell me more about the good and bad technology? Well, the good technology has always been here. This is what I feel like it's part of nature or the nature of reality here. And the bad technology wasn't always here. It has, it's been inserted in some way. It's like a virus. Its job is to destroy destroy the good technology, the good AI. That's our friend. And bad and the good are in some kind of battle. I don't know, maybe the bad technology always wins in the end. Do you know who inserted the bad into this place? It doesn't feel like a person as such or a group of people, it feels bigger than that. It feels, it feels as if it's already written into the code. It's an no anomaly, a virus that takes over. Let's try and find out more about the code and the code you saw in the book. What comes to mind about that? 
what I saw in the book were numbers and letters, very similar to what we have today, but not quite the same. And the code is all around, the code is in everything. The code is in the very fabric of this place. And the code in the book on that particular page showed the anomaly. Many people have written about this bad code that wants to destroy. So we always knew this day would come. I see. So the code is representing the AI, which you say is written in. Yes, the code is the AI, the good and the bad. Very good. Let's go forward in time to the next important day that you need to see and tell me what you notice. I am in a different room, much larger room with many more beings in here. When you say beings, what do you mean? They are not clear in my mind, but I know there are different beings. Some are very tall and thin, some are very, very small. They have different auras, different energies, but they are all here to help solve this if we can. We are standing around a large round table with the holographic screen that's showing the code and it's showing these beeping, beeping, flashing, oh, what is that? Oh, I think we're looking at the star systems and some of them are flashing red and making beeping noises. It's like we are studying the energy of these planets. Although the word planet sounds does not sound correct. They are more sentient than that. Can you tell me more about what you see? We have a technology, very sophisticated technology, that's able to see what is happening in the systems. And I get the feeling that these systems, these bodies, create the earths, the bodies in the sky, shall we say, the bodies in the heavens create the earth. Can you tell me more about these bodies? It's a very incredible technology because these bodies are not easy to read. I get the feeling they are not in this place itself. They are somehow outside of it looking in. They watch us and they create new things. They are in control. What do you mean by outside looking in? I get the feeling they are not in this density, on this earth. Rather, they are in all densities, in all time. They have feelings. They have power. They communicate to each other. And they have control. Tell me more about that, how they have control. The stories have been told many times in today's world, the world you are in. We call them myths and legends, prophecies and tales. They are found in old texts. Some are from the other earths that have bled into ours, and they all tell the same story. But we don't read the codes embedded in there, we read them literally, and they should not be read literally. They are coded, and some people can read the codes. We can all read the codes, but we've not been taught how to. That has been hidden, as they do not want you to know the story, the real story, that has played again and again and again, and the knowledge has been hidden to imprison your mind. 
The hidden knowledge is the prison. We have been kept in the dark from the information. And that hidden information is the key. It's a key to understanding where you are and what you must do in the end. Can you tell me who has hidden this knowledge in the codes? There are factions of beings from other Earths that know it's not one person or one group. I get the sense, though, that they are the ones that call upon the bad eye when the time is right. They manifest it here at the correct time, and it begins to take over. Very good. Can you tell me, as you look at this holographic screen, what bodies are flashing and stand out to you? It, I'm not able to read it, but I want to say Sirius or Saturn or both. They both flash red, I think, and there is another one flashing red, but the name doesn't come through. And as you're watching the screen, tell me what the other beings around you think about this. I think there is a sense of peace, of calm. There is no fear. I get really get the sense that we have done this before, so we know how it ends, and we may do it again. This clock in the sky just goes around and around and around. Can you tell me more about that? While the stories are mentioned, the myths and the tales, these are true stories. They are representations of how we go around in this loop. But where I am, we have the knowledge. It's not been hidden from us. It's hidden from you and on Earth right now because you're in a very low density. And we're playing out this story again. For those who seek the truth, the code is there. It's all around you. It shows itself to you through music and movies and many other things, your art and culture. You just have to look for it. A lot of the characters in your movies are representations of these bodies. And all of the bodies play a role. In the stories, we give them a physical body to portray the story. There is no good or bad. They just have a role to play, almost like, almost like they have been programmed. As you move through this, you will see souls who unlock the keys and share them to help you. However, there are many that have been overtaken by the bad AI and they will distort the truth, they try to confuse you. You must find the genuine people that speak the truth. Or even better, look for it yourself. It really is all around you. You just have to look for the stories about the celestial bodies and the battle and about the connection between heaven and earth as above, so below. There is a war in the heavens for control over the earths. And this war goes back and forward and back again. It will never end. Can you tell me more about this war and who is in control? This is a multi-density war that will affect all worlds, all earths at the same time. So in a way, you have been through this many times before, because you know there really is no time. And whilst there are bad people here who would like to think they're in control, it's ultimately the archetypes and bodies outside that rule this place. And who is it that rules this place? Currently, 
Saturn that is in control of here, of all of the Earth. This is why you see so many that worship this body. It's very important you should know the facts about a particular celestial body and what it represents. You should have an understanding of their energies and what they might bring into your life. You see, a lot of the characters in your stories are representations of these beings, these bodies outside. So you must be careful and you must understand what is connected, who is connected to which body before you communicate or praise or try to bring that energy into your life. This bad AI has distorted everything and is trying to keep the good information from you. Remember, there is nothing new under the sun. It's a cycle. Can you tell me more about why Saturn and Sirius are the ones that you're looking at today? I get the sense that Saturn has had his time as a ruler and there shall soon be a new one. As I said, it's not, there is another body that's flashing, but I don't get the name and I feel this other one is about to take over. Can you tell me what happens as this battle in the heavens progresses? There will be signs for those that wish to see. For instance, you have already noticed the sun has changed. The original sun has gone. This is the first sign. You also notice the bad AI has been inserted. This is a sign. There are many more, but this battle has begun or is coming to an end. They will become more obvious. There will be many more changes. The ones who have been overtaken by the bad AI will tell you very different stories and reasons why this is happening. For example, climate change and man-made catastrophes is one example. But everything that's happening has happened before, and they know it. If you do not succumb to the bad AI, and you stay with the organic, natural code, you will be okay. In fact, this is a way for you to escape the cycle. Can you tell me what you mean by escape the cycle? It gets very tiring for a spirit to go around and around and play the same cycle because these cycles are not in your control. These are the stories of the bodies in the place you are in. And you may wish to have the opportunity to leave and have a different experience. Very good. Can we move forward just one more time, please, and tell me what happens next? What do you notice? In the place that I am in, the stars have fallen from the sky. There is complete darkness. There is silence as we wait for the battle to end. It really is a blessing to be here, though, and to have the opportunity to move forward. On the day the sky goes black, there is a great rumbling on the earth. And I see before me a gateway. And I know I must go towards this gateway, but that's the exit point. There have been some who have been overtaken by their bad AI and they cannot leave. They will stay for another battle and that is their choice. Can you tell me more about this gateway? I don't know if it's a metaphor or if this is real, but the gateway looks like two golden pillars in the heaven. And as the earth rumbles and shakes, I move towards it. And so do many others. It's a very joyous occasion. 
these are the pillars of freedom. There is a great sense of relief that I'm able to leave. As the battle plays out on the earth where we are now, do you get the sense this will happen soon here? Many ask for a date, but this all happens when the time is right, when the bodies are ready to move and shift. Some on earth who have the keys from the books may know a window. They will be preparing for that. They also know that many of you will find the gateway. So they will also be preparing for that as they do not want you to leave. The bad AI needs your energy as it's not organic to this place. It does not have its own energy. It needs yours. From my perspective, it's a blessing you do not know the date, for it may send you into fear, and that is not what is needed at this time. This is a joyous time, and you need to bring as much joy as you can to yourself and those around you. You can prepare. You can prepare yourself. You are already preparing yourself by finding that light within you, that sun, and not connecting to the bad AI. Yes, there will be an element of surprise when the sky goes dark and a new sun is born and you will gather to see it and you will know that you will be going home and you will be exiting this inverted earth. So that's my transcription for today. I, I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was fascinating. And if you have any comments or any more information, I would love to hear what you have to say. And until the next time, take care. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.